No. Yeah, but here in Libya, we're kind of late. So our exams will be in August, our final exams. Oh, okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Break a leg. Good Thank luck, you. then. All right, so uh, let's uh, go back to our book, our lovely book. We stopped here with unit 2.2. The name of our is Changing Your Mind. What do you think this, this unit is going to be about? Both opinions. Opinions. Yes, thank you. Sharing uh, opinions. Someone? Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Tasneem. How to convince someone, convincing others. Yeah, you're right. Now, um, so let's start with some, uh, some questions here. Then we're gonna read an introduction about a, about a recording. Yes, uh, today's like, we're gonna start today with the listening, but before we start with the listening, let's have some background information. So have you, have you heard of a living library? If, if not, what do you think a, a living library is? Living library, wow. I think it's, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let you guess. <laughs> For Any me, clues? I heard of it, <laughs> and I have no idea. Sorry, Maybe I couldn't I hear you. I think an online maybe library. An online library, yeah, right. But it would be like a virtual library, not a living library. Uh, yes. Tartila, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Your, your internet, or perhaps my internet, wasn't well. No, it's probably my internet. Um, I said, I guess it's maybe a library where people sit and chat. Well, not, I guess this is a normal it. library. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But no, in libraries, uh, people don't chat. It's just Yeah, just read and study. Maybe they can whisper. I used to whisper a lot in the library and they, you know, like the librarian would give you that look, like just keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So read about, read about libraries and uh, let's see if, if our ideas are right. We have this paragraph to read, then we're gonna listen about this kind of invention. And let's see if our ideas were right. Let me zoom in. Um, uh, I don't know what kind of devices you use, but I guess if I zoomed in, it would be better for you. Okay. Right. Who wants to read? Do we have anyone who wants to read? If you I'm want, sorry. I can read. But, I'm sorry. Yeah. I can read. I guess Ikram said it first. So go on, Ikram, read, please. Okay. Um, can you change people's opinions by talking to them? The idea of the living library originated uh, in, Scandin in Scandin Scandinavia. Scandinavia. Uh, readers come to the library to borrow real uh, people in the same way that they would normally borrow books. They can, uh, they can then take them away to a corner for a 15 minute chat uh, in, the course of, in the course of which they can ask any questions they like and hear real lives, uh, live answers. The idea is that uh, by doing this, the reader will start to uncover some of the pre preconceptions, preconceptions, preconceptions um, that they may have. Uh, and the book is able to try and dispel a few of the typical st stigmas, uh, stereotypes, and pre prejudices. Um, pre, pre, uh, prejudices. Pre okay, they encounter in their. Uh, they encounter in their everyday lives. Wow, this is exactly what I needed when I was in college. I mean, in college you have like um, thousands of books, but once you take the book, it's really difficult to find like the exact information you want, or you read something and it's really difficult for you to understand. And this invention is amazing. So Tartilo is right. It's just a library where people just 
sit down and chat about something which is not allowed in, in almost all the libraries around the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's simple, but ingenious in my opinion. If you're asking yourself, what is Scandinavia? Scandinavia is a part of the world. It's, it's the area where um, three European countries are, I believe Sweden, uh, Norway, and Denmark. This is Scandinavia. And it's famous for, uh, what, what was their names? Just let me remember. The high, the hike, not the hiking, the Viking. Yes, the Viking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, teacher, can I ask you something? Yes, please. New vocabulary. Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> it's an idea. Um, so living libraries, uh, when they chat with the, like with the, another person, they are asking for an exact information or, or just like a daily conversation with a stranger. I, I honestly, according to here, ask any question they like to hear, real life answers. According to the text here, it says real life answers. It's, it doesn't mean that anything. It means that, for example, you read something, I'll tell you what, you read something and you find information there, but it's not very comprehensible by you. You search online and you, you find some information there. But what scholars and students really need is the real life answer. That's the, 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 the expert in front of you answering you. This is, I guess, from reading this, this is what I managed to understand. But to, re to understand more, to understand more, and this is the rest of our lesson, we're gonna listen to a radio program dealing about like talk about living libraries. So listen. And, and answer the questions there. You have three questions to um, put in mind before listening. All right, look at them, read them till I find the recording. It's 2.2. 2. Mm, teacher, can I have a question? Yes, please. If you want to ask about the vocabulary before yes. we read, I can answer you, yes. What, what does stereotypes mean or tips? Stereotype is, um, it's a state where People just judge others by previous ideas, you see? Yes. Yeah, and it's bad. I mean, usually it comes in a, in a very terrible way. Okay, uh, and what does uh, preconceptions mean? Preconceptions, um, okay, conception is, is when you have a concept, it means like, you have an understanding. You're gonna understand this word more while you listen. It's there in your, um, in the vocabulary, in the vocabulary section. Okay. And so I so guess I'm... you would ask about stigmas. Yeah. Stigmas. This is a very good word. Stigma. Stigma yeah. is a very terrible thing. Um, how to explain it to you? It's similar to. Right. So. Like it, it feels it feels of this approval that that people have about a particular illness or kind of behavior. This is the meaning of stigma. Stigma, yeah, right. Typical stigma stereotypes. Um, when people have stigmas, they are this, like they are not welcome in a specific community. So it's something bad, it's something bad. Like let's read here in context and see and about the book is about any try, any disposal and a few typical stigmas. I guess here it has another meaning, which is, yes. But when you, when you, when you say stigma, uh, for example, refugees are stigmatized by, by the locals, you say like, Locals don't really don't really see refugees as as good fit in their communities. This is how they typically use uh, stigma. Uh, yes, here let me see. Here they're telling you we will start to uncover some of the preconceptions that they may have, and the book is able to try and disable a few of the yes here i told you like a pre like like a, a previous judging of something you see 
similar to stereotype. Did you understand the crumb? <laughs> um, yes, somehow yes. Sorry? I said yeah. Somehow I did understand. Right. Now, while we listen, you'll understand more. Let's listen to 2.2. Let's listen to this program talking about the Scandinavian living libraries. It's 2.2. Now, you might think of a library as a dusty old place full of books that nobody uses anymore. But in a living library, the books are real people. People who can share a significant personal experience or a particular perspective on life. Today, we've got uh, two people here to tell us about their living book experiences. Alex Fuller, who was a book at his living library event in Sheffield, and Saba Chaturanda, who was a reader at an event in Norwich. First of all, uh, Alex, hi. Hello. Alex, can you tell us a little bit about the experience? What kind of book were you and what was it like? Uh, yeah, well, the event was organised by the university and was meant to tackle prejudices. Mm -hmm. I arrived in a bit of a hurry and uh, quickly checked through the catalogue to see what kind of books were available and uh, to sign myself in as a student. A student, OK. And what sort of prejudices were you expecting? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure what to expect, really, but uh, when you read the catalogue, against each book, there are a few of the typical prejudices and preconceptions that people might associate with your title uh -huh. next to student people had written things like lazy <laughs> uh, politically apathetic <laughs> do useless degrees, <laughs> and also waste taxpayers' money, can't cook, and uh, spends all his money on beer. <laughs> well, thinking back to the previous night, I wasn't sure how I was going to tackle any of those accusations. I see. So what did you do? Um, well, first, we just had to go and sit in the waiting room, and I was beginning to have second thoughts, to be honest. <laughs> I was quite uneasy about it all, but anyway, then the public started coming in. It was like sitting on a shelf, waiting waiting and hoping that someone would choose you and hoping that you'd be able to find something to say when they did. Uh, right, and presumably someone did choose you? Uh, yeah. Uh, an older man with grey hair and a suit uh, came to collect me. Oh. <laughs> and as we were walking over to our corner, I was planning my responses to the expected accusations. But in fact, as we started talking over coffee, mm -hmm. we compared our experiences. You know, student life in the 1960s with its riots and protests, wild music <laughs> and all the ambitions they had of changing the world, and student life now. OK, uh, and what did you discover? Anything interesting? Actually, we found that we shared a lot of the same ideologies and that many things haven't really changed. Ah. Well, that's interesting. So, do you think there was any point in the session? Did it change your opinions at all? I think the directness of the experience was eye-opening, really. It forces you to have a very candid discussion, so people have to keep an open mind about things, mm -hmm. and that has to be good. Thank you. Um, and Saba, how was your experience? Was it similar? Did you enjoy the living book experience? Hi, thank you. Uh, yes, I really enjoyed the experience. Um, I went to a three-hour session in Norwich and I was really surprised at how much I learnt. It gives you a chance to really talk to people mm -hmm. who may be from a different religion or culture, uh, people who you don't normally get to talk to in your everyday life. Mm. Great. Well, so who did you talk to? Uh, I met all kinds of people, some wonderful people. Uh, one of them was a lady called Carrie, a blind woman. Oh. Uh, Carrie is... having lost her sight due to illness when she was a child. The first thing that struck me about Carrie is that she's fiercely independent. She doesn't like other people doing things for her, mm. so you can imagine <laughs> that can be a bit difficult. Absolutely. Uh, so what did you learn from Carrie? OK, uh, her mission was to tackle the stigma that people attach to blind people, mm. that they're helpless. So she wants to challenge the stereotype that just because a person can't see, they can't do anything for themselves. And how does she do that? 
Well, uh, Carrie lives a perfectly normal life. Uh, she goes to work, goes out socially, and does all the things that the rest of us do. Well, she can't drive, but that was really one of her few limitations. She told me about other successful blind people around the world who have had a great impact on society. Mm. Uh, people who've been successfully employed or taken degrees, published books, even participated in Olympic events. Mm. These are the people that have been Carrie's inspiration. Yeah, that's wonderful. T tell me, did you ask Carrie about her other senses? You, you know, people often say that people who are blind use their other senses because these are quite well developed. That's right. Carrie feels that she's quite a good judge of character because she's able to see people for who they really are on the inside mm. rather than just how they want to present themselves or how you may judge them because of the clothes they're wearing. <laughs> As she put it, she's able to see with her heart rather than her eyes. OK, how interesting. So, uh, did the conversation change your views on disability? Oh, yes, it did, definitely. My conversation with Carrie gave me a whole new perspective. It taught me not to be narrow-minded about disability, and I thank her for that. Wow, that's, that was really great. I've never heard of such a library before. It sounds like... A private tutoring <laughs> more than a library. All right, interesting. So um, did you change your opinion about this kind of libraries? Yes, I guess. Were you, were you it seems able really interesting. To, sorry, were you able to listen to the entire recording? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, great. Okay, um, sorry, go on. Uh, I just said, uh, yes, uh, they seems uh, it's really interesting experience and I want to <laughs> try this. Yes, definitely. Maybe when you travel to Scandinavia. Um, I guess, I I'm not sure, but um, as far as I remember, Finland would consider, I, I, I'm not sure if it is in Scandinavia, but Finland as well, is, it's very famous for um, its higher education. I mean, people there are really, are really good at, you know, uh, teaching others. So would you ever take part of this experience, like go to have a chat with an expert about kind of book you read? Yes. No. No, why not? For me, okay, continue, Crown. Uh, it's okay, but I feel no because I like to uh, like learn the information by myself. Like I want to search about it because I think like I can remember it more than when someone teaches me. She has a point. Okay. Um. I'm sorry, you were breaking. I just heard that you just want to uh, learn the information on your own. What were you saying after that? Yeah, I said because when I learned it like, by myself, uh, instead of someone who was teaching me it, uh, in the future, like I will remember it more. Because, like, I don't know, I think that. You're right, Ikram. You're very right. When you learn something on your own, yes, it takes more, but believe me, I remember when I was like uh, in college, I had like tons of books to read. Like I, I passed 50 subjects in, in college and for every subject you have two or three books. So that makes like more than a hundred books in like in four years. So typically, typically we would do the following. We were just reading the summaries for, for like so many of those books. So if you had someone to, to really guide you you had the time to sit with them and discuss the book. I believe it would be way better than just reading the summary. This is my own perspective about this. And I believe Tartil was sharing something and then it was like, she was interrupted. Go on Tartil, we're listening. Um, I said, yes, because uh, when I, for me, I mean, when I explain something to my friends, it like, it gets stuck with me and I go well with it, <laughs> you know? Uh, cooperation, cooperation. Um, 
this is one of the best thing in education cooperation teamwork people just in in the west they really know how to deal with each other like regarding you know the, the learning process and i believe this this gives the, like this gives them huge advantage in learning yeah, yeah but on the other hand maybe some others would like just to have um their own space regarding studying which is understandable as well not not everybody learns the same so let's answer some questions related to what we listened to they say uh what was written in the catalog next to student what was it do you remember Were you able to get the answer? It's okay if you didn't. It was a very long recording. No, I, actually the recording like lagged two times because of that. It's okay. We can we can go to the next one. All right. The next question says, um, "How did Alex feel about this?" I think he was feeling great about the experience he did. Uh, at first, he wasn't very sure about it, but he changed. He changed his mind later. Yes, he was nervous at the beginning. He was nervous, and he could. He didn't. He didn't know what to do. You're right. He was nervous. Um, let's see the next one. Uh, so, what actually happened? I believe. He dealt with it. Okay, I, I'm gonna let you say it. What what happened with them? I believe he found an eye-opening experience. Right. What did he say, teacher? I said he found an eye-opening experience. Oh, yes. Yes, and he said uh, they have uh, they have found a lot of uh, share, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, things in common. They share so, so many things. Yes, exactly. Um, now let's go to the second one in the recording. Her name was Saba. Now, what was the first thing Saba noticed about uh, Carrie? She was an old blind woman. Sorry, she was? I think old and blind woman. Yeah, she was a blind a blind lady, yes. And uh, what opinion is, is Carrie hoping to change? Um, that blind people can do anything for themselves. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's unfortunately uh, people with special needs always are, are stigmatized in the community. Ah, oh, thanks. Finally, I, I found the, <laughs> the use of this word. Yes, they're stigmatized yes. because of their disability. But in fact, you, you saw how the opinion of Saba was changed at the end of the recording. So how does being blind affect Carrie's life? Um, she said... Sorry, Kram. She said that she sees people with her heart, not with her uh, with her eyes. So she doesn't judge people for their looks, but for yes, who they are. for what they wear, even for what they wear and how yes. they how they look like black, white. This is very universal. This is, you know, it's like amazing an amazing idea that blind people wouldn't really judge others for how they look like. Interesting. Oh, okay, so um, why does Carrie feel that she is a good judge of, of character? Because she cannot see people, so she's because, yeah, by the... Exactly, this idea is repeated, like I just said it, because uh, she, she wouldn't judge them for how they look or how they even dress. Interesting, such an interesting topic. Okay, now 
this vocabulary we just learned, we can even uh, discuss their meanings again together. So we have perspective, perspective. Uh, if you have a perspective about something, you have an understanding of it, okay? This is would be a perspective. Mind, we know it, it's just mind. It works as a verb and as a noun, as a verb to pay attention to something. As a noun, it's the... Um, the, the 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 part of the the part of our body now eye opening eye opening you know an eye opening experience like an experience that changes your opinion a narrow minded narrow minded people they they don't really think openly they're very limited convincing from convince to make someone believe in an idea now, preconceptions, preconceptions are some ideas you or like you have about something before you even try it. Okay, for example, what we what we did about the libraries, you had some preconceptions before even you read you read about it, you had your own um, theories about it. Um, teacher, it's like expectations, right? Yes, like expectations. Okay. Stereotypes, stereotypes comes to preconceptions, but here stereotypes comes in a negative kind of way. It, it means something like to think about something in a negative way, even before you try it. Or it's not just that, it's just to give a general opinion about some something or some even group of people before you even try to get in touch with them. Second is second. Now, I want to hear, to use this uh, vocabulary to, um, to complete the sentences one to eight. Go on, please. Have you finished? You can do it together. Okay, take your time. Okay, let's do it together. Okay. Um, I, I can do the first one for you. And people tend to have various preconceptions about what a drug addict is. Okay, of course they do. TV. Can I have a question? Yes, please. Um, like, we, like we said, the preconceptions and uh, stereotypes like have similar meanings. Why didn't we like choose stereotypes? 
Sorry. We said preconceptions and stereotypes have similar meanings. So why did we choose stereotypes in the first sentence? All right. Uh, but what, what dragged Eric is, it, it's not exactly the same. Stereotype, we would use it more about, for example, people in the West have stereotype about, stereotypes about uh, people from the Middle East, you see like that. Preconceptions, it's like prior information about something, you see? So they know what drug is, they know it. They know it's something really terrible. They, they saw this pre probably on TV and they have a preconception about it. Like some be before what they, like how to tell you, an idea that, that comes to their mind about something they maybe experienced before. However, stereotype, stereotype is like having a general idea about a group of people or someone, or like not just someone, yeah, it comes about a group of people, ethnics, um, things. Like for example, the Chinese food is terrible. This would be like stereotyping because of course it varies. Maybe it's some parts of it is good and some other parts, it's not good. You get me, right? Yeah, that means preconceptions like have the knowledge, but stereotypes they didn't have the knowledge about the things they are giving opinions about it. Yes, yes, that would be the um, similar to the meanings I was trying to say. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, a preconception, according to Oxford Dictionary, is an idea or opinion that is formed before you have enough information or experience. Okay, for example, a book will be. A book will be um, challenge your preconceptions about rural life. For example, you you know what rural life is. You know people live just outside the city, but you have some preconceptions. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be so quiet. You you don't see any good part of it, perhaps, uh, or maybe you see it too. Like you see it as as a very good thing. So here you have a preconception. Um, however, stereotype is different. Let's see how, how we're going to use stereotype. Go on. Who wants to do number two? Um, I will try. Okay, go on, Tartir. Okay, the aim is, is to challenge the narrow minded that uh, exists about Im um, immigrant, immigrants. The aim is to challenge the stereotypes, the stereotypes here oh. about immigrants. Yes, uh, immigrants always see this kind of, they always face this kind of stereotyping. Like people have general ideas. For example, they say all immigrants are terrible, you know, like this. They are making a general statement. Ah, this is, this is now how it really makes sense to me. I. I'm sorry I couldn't form the meaning very well for you, but now it, it really comes like to my mind, this is exactly the way we use it. Stereotype is like to make it, to generalize. It's, it's a synonym for generalization. When, for example, they judge immigrants, of course, not all immigrants are good and not all of them are bad, but they say they're all bad. You see, for example, or they're all good. People from X country, they're all good. This is what we call stereotyping. Preconception is different. Preconception is to have a pro, like prior knowledge or you, sorry, not knowledge, to have a, a prior uh, ideas about something. So we can say stereotypes like um, a negative- To make a generalization about a group of people. And it's negative that means? Of course, it comes in a negative way. Okay. Okay, uh, Tasneem, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I was feeling nervous and begin, uh, beginning to have second thoughts about the whole idea. So second thoughts, okay, three, thank you. Now, Ikram, it's your turn, number four. Uh, it's important to keep an open mind before making an adjudgment. 
I was feeling nervous and beginning to to have to have a. Oh, sorry. This is number three. Number four. It's important to keep an open mind before making a judgment. Yes, that's right. An open mind before making a judgment. You're right. Mind. Where is mind? It's number four. Let me. Yeah. Um, it's my turn now. Number five. This attitude is very hmm, narrow-minded and intolerant. Intolerant. It's like it doesn't accept others of alternative opinions. Okay. So number five is with narrow-minded. Okay, now Tartil, it's your turn again. Okay, the experience of talking uh, so directly was eye-opening. I had never done anything like it before. Thank you. And now, Tasneem, you can do it. Okay, I saw the situation from a whole new perspective after our conversation. Thank you, this is very true. New perspective, new understanding. And the last one with the Ikram again. Uh, I don't think he really knew his facts, so his argument wasn't very uh, convincing. Convincing, yes, to convince someone with something. Here are the new vocabulary. I hope you enjoy them. And uh, yes, try to use them while you're using your language. So did you take the answers? Can I clean them? Just a second. Yes. yes. Take your time, no problem. Here it goes. Some of those words are like advanced and we use them in so many contexts, such as opening, narrow-minded, perspective, concept, preconceptions. I believe, Akram, you took them, right? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Now, let's move on. Let's move on to something new. Go to the next page, grammar. Verb patterns. Patterns here means like types, okay? So I want you to check what you know. Go there to the sentences one to six and underline the correct alternatives to complete what uh, other people have said. What other people have said about living libraries. Go on. You have. A minute and a half. Think about it. Okay, it's for A. So it was, let's do it together. Let's do it together, guys. Let's do it together. Okay. So it was a great okay. being able to say those things you're usually scared to say, say, or saying. Say. Say, say not to say. To say, I think. I would say to say. Let's see the next one. To say, okay, can continue with the sentence you would understand. And ask questions you're usually afraid to ask. Okay. Now two, we were given we were given the freedom to ask, ask, or asking questions without having to worry asking? about to be, be, or being judged. I guess to ask um... and ask. Yeah. And being yes, asking yes. and being judged. And being judged. Yes. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that second one. That's we don't need it. Oops. All right. So let's go to three. I wanted to offer, offer, offering some insights into my lab, into my job. I took part in the living library 
event to challenge, challenge or challenging to offer stereotypes and offer. Uh, misconceptions I had encountered. So to offer, you could say? To offer. Yes, and challenging. To offer and, and challenging. challenging stereotypes or to challenge. Events to challenge, challenge or challenge. events challenging stereotypes. Challenge. To challenge. To challenge, yes, that would be it. Let's go for four. I enjoy to talk, talk or talking to different people. I learn more about where my arguments for to be, be or being and fall down. What would you say? Talking. Talk. Being. Of course, talking, yes. I enjoy talking and uh, again, uh, where my arguments being. Now, let's move on to five. It's a short sentence. They advised me to be, be or being as honest as I can. To be. To be, thanks. And the last one, to sleep, sleep or sleeping outside um, in the middle of the winter isn't the problem. Sleeping. Okay, sleeping. I guess you had like now, you have some information about what our grammar lesson is going to be about today. Yes. It's going to be infinite. It's going to be about verb patterns, of course, from the title. Um, take your your 10 minutes a break. And after break, we're going to have a going to have our grammar lesson. So Did enjoy you? your break. Yes, please. Um, you can we make have? it 15 like minutes instead of 10 minutes? All right, no problem. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. All right, see you in 15. Hi, teacher. Yes. Hello, teacher. Yes. Okay, let's continue. So before the break, we were discussing some verb patterns, such as to say, say, or saying. So in your opinion, what is the main what is the difference between these three forms, to say or say or saying? Uh, I think it depends on the verb that before them. Okay, we will, we will see. We will see what's the difference between them. I want you to go to that box, if you can, if you can find it. Did you find it? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes, great. So, um, can you can you read the notes and uh, and and look here? What what do we need here? Like, for example, pa passive infinitive or ing form with what? Here you have one, two, or three. Try to match them. Okay, so you have, they seem to have forgotten why uh, we came here. Which one would it be with A, B or C? They seem have forgotten. So they seem have forgotten, to have forgotten. Which one do you think this is? First, let's look what do we have in the box. Sorry? I think the second, uh, the second one be perfect infinitive or ing form. Perfect infinitive or ing form. Okay, and we have negative uh, infinitive. We, this is not negative. And ing form. And the first one we have passive infinitive or ing form. Now, this is so related to the naming of some grammar. I know you understand the, the um, you understand how to use them in some, like at some point, but perhaps you don't know the, the name of the grammar here, which is good, which is not bad. It's okay. So um, my suggestion would be like, we go to page 130. We understand what is 
passive inf infinitive and what is perfect infinitive and what is negative infinitive, then we come back here and we can choose them like, you know, perfectly. So let's go to page 130. Oh, the laptop is on. Right. And go, let's go to 2.2. .2. You can see it, verb patterns. Can you see it now? Yes. Great. So the first thing we have here is verb plus ing. So they're telling you here, many verbs can be followed by a verb in the ing form. Some of these verbs are related to the meaning, uh, like, for example, like, dislike, adore, love, detest, etc. Um, some can also be followed by an infinitive, but the meaning may change. Let's see here, for example, we regret to inform you. You see here to inform. We regret telling you. So here there is a slight different in meaning. They are telling you the, the first one. The first one it says, "We are sorry before we speak." However, the second one we re, we regret telling you. We are sorry after we speak. You see, so um, this is what we call infinitive two plus verb one, and this is verb in the ing. Perhaps you're thinking, what is an infinitive? An infinitive is verb one, and before it, two, we call it two infinitive. So here you can see how the difference in, like how, how um, sometimes changing the structure here can, can create a, like a small difference in meaning. Or followed by, yes. So sometimes we have prepositions are followed by an ing as well. For example, like, are you still interested in buying? Okay. This is because you we, we had a phrasal verb before the, um, the, the gerund, the verb in, in the ing. So we had like this, we are interested in buying the, prop the property. You understand, you know this, you know how to use this. They're just trying to make kind of revision for you before going to the infinitive with two and uh, pa passive infinitive and perfect and negative. Um, infinitive two, can you see this? It's something very huge in the English. It's just something that researchers research for like, they, they, they've been researching for decades. And uh, you can even find books about, about just two infinitive. So don't feel depressed if you couldn't use it properly all the times. Let's see here. They're telling us we have now another case in the ING. ING forms when they uh, now this is what we call gerunds. Gerunds are like um, gerunds are nouns that are made from verbs. Yes, crazy. Look at this example here, smoking is bad for you. So here smoking, it came as a verb, like not as a verb, as a gerund. Here it's a subject, smoking. How did they create this gerund? Just by adding ing. This is how you add, like this is how you create gerund. Smoking, sleeping is bad. Uh, swimming is the best when I'm, uh, when I'm excited, for example. You can see how, how they can just put ing and they can change the verb into an active noun. Here's smoking. Yes, it's a noun, it's a gerund. In fact, this is what, what is the, um, like, this is the grammatical term for it, gerund. Gerund is just a verb that was changed into a noun by adding ing. So this is the first case. I hope it's clear for you. Now let's move on to the second case. Infinitive with two. Yes, they're telling you we use infinitive with two in four cases here. They, get, they gave you four cases. Case number one, after some certain verbs, 
those verbs would be here in your book. Of course, they are more than that, but in your book, they would just choose them. Yes, it's okay. Take those. Appear, decide, fail, need, offer, refuse, want, wish, just those here in your book. These verbs we use after them, we can use infinitive. For example, I hope to neglect, sorry, negotiate. So you can see here how they used I hope or I hoped here in the past and after it too. And you can see it, this is what we call infinitive, which means verb one without ing, without ed, without any suffixes. So this is case number one. After some verbs, we put uh, two plus infinitive. Now let's see this, the second case. After certain verbs plus object combinations. Okay, what object combinations? Let's see. For example, the verb advice, allow, ask, cause and encourage and forbid. Let's see the example. The police ask everyone to remain calm. There is something in English called an object, okay? An object is the thing that the action has, has been done on it. So the police here is the door. Ask is the verb and everyone here is the object. So they're telling you if those verbs, one, two, three, four, et cetera, one, two, three, four, five, six verbs, they came and before them, an object, of course, you need to use them with two. The police asked everybody or everyone to remain calm. Of course, you used the structure before but you didn't know what, what grammar rule you used. Now you learned it. Um, teacher, what does forbid mean? Forbid, it means to stop someone from doing something. Okay. I forbid you to, or I forbid you of, let's, let, me, let me try to remember an example. Ah, yeah, I forbid you to use my cell phone, for example. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, case number three, they're telling you with some nouns, often as a part of semi-fixed phrases. Yeah, for example, happy to help. Sorry to annoy you. Like this. They are like semi-fixed phrases, like small phrases. It's time to, to have some lunch, you see? To have, to help. This is how you use it as well. Happy to help. Sorry to bother. Okay. I hope the cases, the four cases are, are clear for you. Now let's go to the real deal. <laughs> Passive infinitive with ing. Sorry, or ing form. So we have something called passive ing form let's see this like we use passive ing form this is the, the, the like being done to describe actions which are done to the subject i hate being told what to do this is exactly it's it's similar to it's not similar it is passive it is passive voice i i have i have been told okay I hate being told, someone told me, and I don't care who, why, but I, I hate that action. So this is how you can use it. You we use it, why? To describe, to describe actions which are done to the subject, maybe you, maybe others. He hates, he hates um, being sent being sent to to the shopping mall, for example. For example, you're talking about your brother. He hates being sent to the shopping mall. So this is uh, this is how you use what we call passive infinitive. It's passive because you don't 
know who did who who did the action here, but of course you're describing the action which which is um, done on the on the subject. Use the passive infinitive to be done after some verbs, especially uh, reporting verbs. Yes, do you know reporting speech? He was considered to be. He was told to say. This is um, this is wait to be done. Yes, he was considered. Yes, exactly. He was considered. He was considered again the same the same issue. Uh, describe an action that is done on the subject. He was considered to be the right person for the job. Um, it's. Um, it's very important that you just understand the, the grammar and you don't waste a lot of time learning its name because at the end of the day, you're gonna use the language unless you wanna study you know, English literature or any kind of linguistic studies. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's always good to learn by practice more than just the theoretical learning, but it's always good to have them. Um, so now let's let's go to the next part. Perfect infinitive or ing form. Let's see how this um, case is being structured and used. Use the perfect plus ing having done, having done, or to have done. This we have two cases here. To have done to emphasis when one action happened before another hmm so this is this is mostly comes when when it's a uh, a compound or a complex sentence let's see an example here she mentioned having seen him leave they seem to have solved the problem Having seen him leave, and they seem to have solved the problem. So, yes, this is to show emphasis on on when the action when the action happened before another one. Teacher, I don't really get it. Yeah, this one is a little bit confusing, honestly. Yes, she lot. mentioned having seen him leave. Come on, they seem to have solved the problem. Yes, what do you think, Ikram? I think they mean like uh, they saw them, like they saw them uh, leaving, then she mentioned that. So they saw them first, then she mentioned that they saw them. Yes, they saw them first, and then she she has uh, like or she she mentioned having seen him. Yes, she seemed to have solved the problem. She mentioned having seen him leave. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the, the I'm sorry, I, I just need to stop my WhatsApp. It's beeping, just one minute. Yes, let's have a look again. Let's have a look again here on the case. Can you see it now? Is it back on the share? Yes. Yes. Let's look here. They're telling us to use the perfect with ing having done or the perfect infinitive to have done to emphasize when one action happened before another. Um, right. Let's see the example. She mentioned having seen him leave. Comma. Comma. They seem to have solved the problem. Okay. So. This is would be another person looking at a, a couple, okay? And she saw him, she mentioned having seen him leave. Comma, they seem to have solved the problem. So she saw him first to get an, to get an idea about an action that happened before. To have solved is ha happened before, happened first, right?
Is that what what were you trying to say, Ikram? Um, no, I think like the uh, two different sentences, isn't they? Yeah, I think that too. Um, yes. I, was, like, <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. But, I think I mean, teacher in the first example, uh, he leave and then she mentioned that uh, she see him leaving. Yeah, so I, I meant like, like she, the, the person that she's talking about, like he was leaving. Then she noticed and said that he was leaving. I think that. Yeah, I agree with right. you. It can it can be possible that way. It's just um, the punctuation isn't really clear. I, I, I uh, it it looks like a full stop or but at some point it looks like a comma as well. Yes, and it connecting looks a lot the two like sentences a with a comma as well is very strange. By the way, sometimes the punctuation can change the entire meaning, especially in these kind of sentences. Yeah, but I think also like they start with a capital letter. It can't be a comma, right? It can't be a comma with a capital letter. You're right. Thanks for your notice. It's definitely can't be. There are two separate close. There are two separate sentences here. She mentioned having seen him. Okay. They seem to have solved the problem. Well, um, all right. Even if they are, even if they are like separate sentences, there. One one of them happened first. It, it doesn't matter that they're the same sentence. They're just the meaning of the phrase have seen, the, the meaning of the verb, like, like the verb phrase here could intend another meaning. Right, let's keep this case. Let's keep this case for later. I will just um, deeply search in it and then we can come back to it. Let's now go to the negative infinitive with ing. Let's see an example of it. Could you read it, uh, Ikram, please? Uh, yeah, I read after verbs or read the example. Read the example, please. Okay, we would hate to have lost the match. No, sorry, it's a quiet comma, not to understand it first. Oh, not okay. understanding is a quiet comma. Thank you. Infinitive can be all right. Let's see now here. You can see here how they use the infinitive after not two, and then they used just infinitive. It's common not to understand. This is one way you can use it, or you can say just not understanding is quite common. Now they tell you in the last case, infinitive can be the subject of a sentence. Yes, for example, to learn is important. Not to think, not to not to thank her would be impolite. You can see how uh, again infinitives can be the subject of the sentence as well. Teacher, but in this case we can say not thanking her would be impolite. Like this is common, you know. Yes, you can say both of them. Sometimes there is, of course, not just like in so many um, in so many contexts, you can use both of them. Honestly, sometimes it's really difficult to to differentiate between putting um, like putting infinitive or ing form. So yeah, this is why I told you from the beginning of the lesson. Don't you don't you feel a little bit down if you couldn't like have them all correct because it's something that even some native speakers would make mistakes with but at least we try to have a like a clear understanding of the general rules like what is called negative infinitive passive infinitive and perfect infinitive as well here they didn't really um it, it wasn't really like uh that you know difficult to understand if you look at it this way it's they just wanted to see the structure having seen having done okay having done or have solved for example have this is this is just what they wanted to show you they wanted to show you that this structure is valid and this structure is valid too 
But again, one action happened before another. Those two sentences are not one sentence, I know, but they are connected in, in meaning. They want to tell you one of them happened before another. I like, yeah, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to say that, but it was a little bit confusing here. So teacher, she saw him and then she mentioned that she saw him, right? It can, it can be. I, I will double check and get back to you with this one, but there, the meaning here is connected, definitely. They wouldn't put like, the two examples like that and they, they wouldn't connect the meaning. It, it meant that one action happened before another, but what they wanted you to learn is that, look at this structure, how to use it, having seen. In fact, this is a very, um, this is very, this is a very formal structure. And sometimes you can use it at the beginning of the lesson. For example, having known the changes in et cetera case, the court took procedures in X, Y, and Z. So yeah, um, learning about infinitive can be, infinitive and ing can be really, um, can, can, can really take long time. But no problem. No problem. At least we have a, the general concept of, of what is this all about and the structure, the understanding of the structure as well. Do you have any questions regardless of that condition that we will come back to it later on? No. Others? No. No. All right. I'm sorry that I talk a lot while explaining grammar. I know we should make it a bit shorter. Definitely, you should focus more on your skills. So now let's go on to 2.2. And let's do number one. Underline the, co the correct alternative as well. Again, you need to make it like infinitive with ing or plus two, you see? So go ahead, have, have a look at this paragraph and then we will do it together. Okay. All know, we all know. Great. What about you others? Uh, give me one second. Okay, um, let's do it together. So you can help me with finding the answer. I will read and you tell me wh which is the correct alternative. 
Now we all know how important make making or to make a good uh, a good first impression. To make. To make. Again, making making a good impression. It sounded more natural to me. Yes, making a good impression. We say. We've heard we've heard this statistics. When uh, when you meet someone for the first time, only seven percent of their impression is based on what you say. Thirty-eight percent on how you say it, and a massive fifty-five percent of your uh, uh, sorry, it's appearance and manner. So it's vital not to underestimate, underestimating, or to underestimate. Underestimate. Uh, sorry, did you, it's vital not not under underestimate or not to underestimate. Not to underestimate. Not to underestimate. Yes, we always say not to. We don't say just not and immediately put a verb after it. This, this needs a yes. To infinitive. Now. Um, the importance of choosing your clothes carefully when you go to that key meeting or job interview, this is your opportunity, impress, impressing to impress. Impress to impress. Well, yes, of course, to impress. On walking, sorry, on walk or on walking or on to walk into the room walking, walking. of course walking you know it it's i i really like it really went out naturally after you practice you don't really come back to the grammar unit you just have your own um linguistic instinct so most people are are likely to have form or to have forming of course your form is a, a verb or to have formed. To have formed. To have formed an opinion of your character. You see here, something happened another, uh, before another one. An opinion about your uh, character based on your appearance in less than three seconds. It is difficult. Say, saying, or to say. To say. To say. say. Of course, to say. Why people in, uh, insist on Judging or to judge. Judging. 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 Judging by appearance. Even when we know that it is so unreliable. Do doing to do this. To do this. Yes, to do this. Even in courtrooms, juries and judges appear give giving to give. Lighter sentences to people who are well dressed. To give. To give. Yeah. You know the meaning of sentences here? Yeah, when they give like a, a charge to someone. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So to give, yes, we, we're we're done with answering the exercise. But do you know the meaning of, of sentence here? I'm not sure, but I know that. When like when the, the like the judge right, like give uh, a charge to someone maybe I give it like he give it light to them when someone's not well dressed. Um, sentence here it means to like when the judge gives a sentence it means to give um, what this person will do as a punishment. So lighter sentences it means less punishment. All right now. This is uh, your homework, B. You can do it on your own, and then we can. I can give you the answers. And now let's go back to where we stopped, page perhaps 25. Let me check. Yes, now it's our, yes. Now let's complete the sentences with the correct form of verbs. Here you have eight sentences again. This is a good practice. After that, you can have some speaking. So go on, you have eight sentences to work on.
Um, I will do number one for you. I will. Do, yes. Sorry. What did you say? Um, since we like, we're going to do C. Sorry. Uh, weren't we going uh, to do C in the question B? We said we will come to it back. C. Yes. Sorry. This one. Yes. Sorry. My bad. Let's uh, let's do it together. You're right. Um, who wants to read? Who wants to read the rules and then we can match them together? One, two, and three. I can do. Go on, please. Uh, a passive infinitive or ing form. Use the passive infinitive or ing form uh, to talk about actions which are done to the subject. B perfect infinitive or ing form. Use the, uh, use the perfect infinitive or ing form to emphasize uh, when one action happens before another. C negative infinitive or ing form. Negative infinitives or ing forms uh, can often be made the subject of a sentence like this. Yes, this is interesting. So the first one, would it be A, they seem to have forgotten why they, come, why, they came, uh, why they came here, or two, to understand, not understanding people's reasons, etc. or three, is always being stopped by police just for the way he looks like. He looks like. It's, it's missing. Three. three. Uh, definitely three, definitely. Number one is with three. This is what we call a passive inf uh, infinitive, uh, being stopped. We discussed this. Now, the second one, perfect infinitive or ing form, would it one to have forgotten or yes, two? One. It's one, yes. We just studied this, to have forgotten. It's what we call perfect infinitive. And now we have C. Um, negative infinitive or ing, of course, it's not understanding people's reasons, etc. And here is, here are your answers. Okay. Now let's go to our exercise. All right, you have here now eight sentences to work on. I will do number one for you. Where is my, yes. I didn't expect to feel. To feel so embarrassed, but the questions they asked were so personal. Go on, work on the others. Okay. Uh, have you finished? Yes. Right. Ikram, you can start with number two. Um, to have met Linda and to have had the chance to talk about her experience was enlightening. 
sorry, the first one to me is that or what? What did you say? Chad, number number two, number two. Can you say it again? I couldn't hear you well. Uh, to have met Linda and to have had the chance to talk about her experience was enlightening. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, thank you for trying to use the perfect uh, infinitive, but honestly, this is a mistake that uh, students, when, when like students make when they newly learn this. Well, it's not always used, it's just used in some contexts. So here just naturally would say meeting. We need the gerund for meeting Linda and having the chance, just having ing, having the chance to talk about her, exp her experience was enlightening. Number three, you can go for a tartil. Okay, they had the opportunity to ask me anything they, uh, they want, that they wanted. Thank you to ask. That's very, very correct. Now your turn, uh, Tasneem. Uh, it's hard to imagine what it's like to live with uh, a disability. Yeah, correct. So correct. Thank you. I I wouldn't even con sorry contemplate leaving the country. ING. Now, Ikram, you can do the next one. Uh, she had refused to marry the man her parents had chosen for her. So, refused to marry. That's correct. Thank you. And again, Tartilu, you can do the next one. Somehow, he seemed to lose all the money already. Um, I would say here to have lost. He seemed, he seemed to have lost all the money already. Again, you see, you have already. So he, he already lost the money. That means an oh. action that happened before another action. This is what the infinitive. Some, um. Somehow he seemed, he, he seemed, to have okay, lost I... the money. Something? Yes, yes, please say. Um, without already, uh, we can see seem to lose because I read this a lot, like seem to care, seem to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Infinitive yes, form. yes, but um, let's, let's imagine that we don't have already. Somehow he seemed to lose all the money. But here it seems like there is there is something missing. The context isn't there. In different contexts, it would work. Yes, you could say to lose, of course. But okay. the context would be different, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, now the last one with Tasneem. Uh, he is fed up with being called prude names. All right. Uh, being called, yes, being called. This is definitely a school student. All right, so we're done with this exercise. Do you have any questions? For me now. Okay. Now, let's have this speaking card. They're telling us, make the sentences below with numbers one to five. One strongly agree and five strongly disagree. So one strongly agree, two would be like, yeah, agree. Three agree for an extent, you know, agree for an extent it means like, yeah, somehow I agree. And four would be disagree, and five strongly disagree. Let's see the, the phrases. Um, medical and technological advances will mean that the future there will be no disabilities. 
I I just disagree, but I definitely not strongly disagree because in my opinion, the technology will reduce the disabilities. Um, I don't really think that I get the idea here. <laughs> just, it's just, um, it's just no. stating your opinion. You would just say, I strongly agree with this information. I, I know, I wasn't talking about a question and the medical and technological advance. Yes. Um, this statement means that the advances in technology and medicine will lead to no disabilities. Like the future, the, in the future, there will be no disabilities. You know, disabilities like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, this is I what they agree. So, what do you think, girls? For me, I choose four. Not strongly disagree. But I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Yes. All right. Come, do you want to add something? I chose the five. I strongly disagree. I strongly disagree. Why? I think like technology will give the people ability to like work. It will have like a lot of um, sort of job to do. I don't know. I feel. I feel I disagree with that. Yeah, maybe maybe the, the new technology will cause even more uh, disabilities by harming you know people in different ways. So let's see the next one. Women should be permitted to top jobs in business and politics before men. <laughs> of I, course, I, I strongly disagree. I agree. So I mean, not strongly yeah. agree, right? Teacher, we're three, <laughs> three girls. But you guys, this is so biased. It says before men, before men. It Not doesn't say that men, it is equal to yeah. men. But yeah, I exactly. Say, I will say three. I agree. For like, me agree too. for next time. Okay. Oh, wow. Because like in job, they must be equal. Not men before women and not women before men. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, let's now look at the third one. Everybody in the world should have access to a library. Strongly agree. Yes, this is the one that we strongly agree to. Yeah. For me, I choose one too. All right. Let's see the next one. Students, not the state, should pay university tuition fees. What does tuition mean? Okay, so this is, yeah, this is a, a very good one for you. Uh, tuition, it means like the, the tuition fees are the money that related to your study. So in some countries, the state pays the money for your study. Like, uh, for example, in uh, Turkey, even in Syria, um, and in many other countries, they, the government gives the money to the university, so you study, you see? Yeah. However, yeah. Oh. here this statement says the students themselves should pay. No, I, no. Uh, <laughs> I strongly disagree. <laughs> this makes no sense. I agree, I agree. Me too, I chose to. Agree for an extent. Agree for an extent. Like teacher. because. Oh, sorry. I'll tell you. Go on. Go on. Tell me what is what, what is like your perspective if, on that? If you want to pay, you can just join like private college. Yeah. You will get better education. But some people that they don't even have the money to pay, but still want to learn. You know. Yes. Yes. You're right. You're right. When we look on it logically, logically speaking, uh, the the like the universities that are funded by universities, they're not as good as the ones that are supported with the fees from students. And you can look, for example, in the UK. In the UK, the 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 
like the education ranking is super more than super high. It's like a hot spot for students to come and study from all over the world. However, like here, like in many other countries, it's not that it's not that you know well developed system. So this is why I would say students should pay because eventually when students pay, it's going to be better. Um, but at the I same time, I... from a humanitarian point of like of view, yes, the state should pay. <laughs> so it's something that is really, you know, um, hard to discuss the crime. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> I think you have finished again. Um, I think like, uh, I agree with them because like the students, uh, the, sorry, the state, it's not the, not the state uh, responsible, like, or responsibility, sorry, to pay for their students. They like can study in a nation, national, like, uh, or a local university. They don't have to pay. Yeah, again, you have a point of view. So individual countries, don't have the right to interfere with the affairs of an another countries or another country. Yes, this is very good. I totally agree with that, strongly agree. So it says that some countries shouldn't interfere. Interfere, it means to get involved on the affairs, like the things that are happening in another country. Yes, countries should respect the the other country's affairs and they shouldn't interfere with it or with them, in my opinion. Did you understand the statement? No. Uh, what does affair mean, affair? Um, look, look, guys. For example, affairs here, it means like problems in the country. So some countries, some uh, like huge powers, unfortunately, interfere with the problems of some other countries. And that even cause bigger problems in those countries. So here they, they say to you, these countries like individual countries do not have the right, they shouldn't have the right to interfere. Interfere, it means like to get involved of someone else's work. It's not your issue to deal with, with the affairs of another country. So, did you understand it now? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but I disagree, actually. Yes, I agree, definitely. Countries should, shouldn't interfere with the affairs of uh, other countries. I disagree because, like, you know, like, in Europe, uh, Greece, I think, yeah, like, some years before, they said that, that they all broke out, then they have to get help from another country. So they have to interfere in, in Greece to help them to get up again. Yes, but the Greece is the one who asked for help. They, they didn't interfere without the permission of Greece. This is what they say. Individual countries shouldn't interfere with the affairs of another country. This is the meaning of interfere. Oh, anyway, so... oh politics is Politics is sometimes difficult to comprehend. Now, um, I believe this would be it for today. I believe this would be it. Um, next lesson, we can go to uh, 2.3. I hope you enjoyed today. If you have any questions, if you have any inquiries, please feel free to share me. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Um, one more thing, one more thing. When is our makeup lesson? Do you have a particular day you would be more comfortable with next week? Um, I don't know. Wednesday. Sorry? Uh, I said maybe Wednesday. Maybe Wednesday. Okay, let's not make it sure. I will write you. And uh, if you're okay with it, you can confirm to me if you have some other commitments we can even have it later okay now okay see you next week then and uh, enjoy the rest of your day you too thank, thank you, you. you too. bye guys bye, bye, -bye.